Numbers chapter 33. Numbers chapter 33 is a timeline. If you read it, it's a timeline from their exodus out of Egypt, the Red Sea, and so forth. It goes down and down and down. We come up to a place where it's 40 years later. Can you imagine being in the wilderness for 40 years? You learn a lot. Amen? I think the, the number 40 is really important. You know? Let's see. I received, really gave my life to the Lord when I was maybe... After Kay was born, when he was two years old, he's 24, right? So he's about 20, another 20-something years. I probably start to get and understand what's going on. Amen? Amen? 40 years. It says here, verse 50, On the plains of Moab, by the Jordan, across from Jericho, the Lord said to Moses, Now, mind you, the people were there 40 years, learning how to trust God, feasting on manna, Amen? Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you cross the Jordan into Canaan, drive out all the inhabitants of the land before you, destroy all their carved images and their cast idols, and demolish all their high places. He's saying, when you go there, when you cross the Jordan, I want you to take all that stuff down, destroy it. And it says, take possession of the land and settle in it, for I have given you the land to possess. Amen. What's happening here? God is saying is this. Your time is over in the wilderness. It's time to go to a place that I've already given you, but you must possess it. Amen? Amen. How many of you know God has stuff that he wants, he's giving you, but you've got to do the work? <laughs> right? You have to possess it. You have to make the effort. Amen? That, again, he will provide for you. Right? Check this out. And of course, think about the things that he wants you to possess. When you get there, have nothing to do with any other idols. Don't let nothing be a part of that. Amen? Verse 55 says, But if you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land, those you allow to remain will become what? Barbs in your eyes and thorns in your what? Sides. Thorns in your flesh. They will give you what? Trouble. Say trouble. trouble. Circle trouble. <laughs> In the land where you will live. And I will do to you what I plan to do to them. So God is saying this. Look. If whatever you allow is going to be like thorns in your eyes and in your flesh. Whatever you allow. Amen. Whatever you allow, I'm going to allow. Because I was going to do, do this thing to them. Amen? What have you allowed in the past that now is a thorn in your flesh? What have you allowed that now is something that is gonna, it's kind of still troubles you. It's kind of still there. It's just like a thorn, it's like a rock in your shoe. And you, you're trying to get rid of it. It's like, ah. Oh. What does that mean for us today? A thorn may be the things you have allowed. Maybe it's something that you have allowed in the past. Now, I want to say this right now. I don't know what a thorn in your flesh would be. I don't know what that would be to you. Or even to Paul. Alright? I have a sense of what the thorn is in my flesh is. Amen? How many of you have, like, thorns in your flesh that kind of keep showing up and it's just bothering you? Amen? And... My thorns keep changing from year to year sometimes. You know? But they're there. But again, 
Again, I don't know exactly what your thorn is, or even exactly what Paul's was, but I know this, Paul said, this was there to keep me what humble. This was there to help me stay focused on trusting who? God. Your struggles, your thorns in your flesh may be something that you have allowed and now it remains and you're kind of dealing with that right now. Like I said, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's something that God is going to use to, for you to continue to trust in Him. Amen? And the only thing I could think about with Paul in his past, what was he in the past? He was a persecutor of Christians. Paul persecuted Christians. He set up a team of people to go and persecute Christians, to kill Christians, until he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, and it changed his life. Maybe, now that's what he's dealing with. Amen? But obviously, he has a thorn in his flesh. So right now, a thorn is maybe there to keep you humble, that you can trust in the Lord. And here is, here is the bomb of the whole thing. If you can grab this, it's, it's, it's powerful. It's better than doing 10 push-ups. Okay? He says here in verse 8, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away, what? From me. Three times. Take this from me. Take it from me. Heal me. And it says here, I want you to read this scripture with me. Verse 9. Ready? One, two, three, go. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in what? Weakness. Read it again. One, two, three, go. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. He's saying, my grace is sufficient for you. The Greek word charis, the word is saying where God ex is, exerts his holy influence into your life. My holy influence in your life, the word charis, my grace is sufficient for you. Amen? Yes, you have all these things. Yes, you have all the troubles. But my grace is sufficient for you. So here's the application. Weakness is the door to God's power or His strength. And you would think opposite. You have weakness or you're weak. You can't stand. But see, with God, weakness represents was the place where God reveals Himself. Amen? You guys remember when Jesus spoke to the woman at the well? And he said, the water that I'm going to give, he says, shall become like a fountain in, some, in you that will spring up out. When you open your heart to the Lord Jesus, when you give your life to Jesus, there's a spring deposited in your life. There's a spring. There's a living water spring. Amen? All right? that can spring up and out. Amen? Alright? If you can catch this, this image, because I didn't bring it today. If you can catch this image. God is showing me, He says, Lance, you're like this. You're like this huge glass of my living water and you're filled but the only way you start really experiencing that fresh pure experience from me is that when you empty out yourself and if you could imagine a, a glass and rocks blocking the top you can't pour out, you can't experience this because there's me, myself, and I blocking you. Amen? Amen. And I, 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 
here, I have it on my kitchen table, and you're supposed to bring it. But I was thinking about my luggage. Anyway. So, imagine a vase about this big, putting three rocks, actually I have a fourth rock, was called pride. And you wonder, where is that strength? Why am I not experiencing this? Well, because you have to surrender it, you have to empty it out. Get that pride out of there. Get your me out of there, and your myself, and I. Because now I have nothing left. I can't rely on myself. I'm weak. Because some of us are strong on our own. We've got some strong people in here. Very strong willed. All right? But the moment you say, God was saying, Lance, the moment when you start saying, I can't do this. And when you're at that, that level where you have nothing left. That's what it is. You have nothing left. And that is when, that is when, his power, his strength comes. It's the opposite of trying to be strong. And a lot of us try to be strong. I'm trying to be strong. I'm trying to be strong, Pastor. I don't be strong. Be weak. Surrender. Don't be strong. Don't try to fight. Surrender it. Surrender it. And once you surrender, it's amazing. The fresh, living water comes. And you experience that. And you have the supernatural happen. He says, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Amen? That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in what? Weakness, insults, and in hardships, persecutions, and difficulties. I want you to read this last part. For when I am weak, what? I, I am strong, then I am strong. For when I am weak, then I am strong. It's made perfect. His strength is made perfect in weakness. Application, surrender your weakness to the Lord. Surrender, like that song, just surrender it. Nothing left but the Lord. And let me tell you what, He will move. He will fill you. He will give you the strength that you need to continue on. Amen? Amen? If you ever wonder how Paul could endure all those hardships, that's how he did it. That's what one of the revelations is surrendering. What are the things in your life that you need to surrender? What are the things in your life that you're struggling with? Maybe you're struggling with a, a thorn in your flesh and you said you're having difficulties, but you need God's strength to go through because Paul went through it. He still, it wasn't taken away, but he did a mighty work for God. Amen? Right? So the thing you have to ask yourself, what is that for? If I do, am I surrendering? Am I just allowing God to teach me and to show me? Amen? Let's pray. Every eye